of earth his life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam even in modern days with modern technology we don't have so much details about anybody's life and that's in itself a miracle he said your belief will not be complete until you will love me more than everything more than your own soul, more than your own family, more than the wealth and everything that you have in this dunya. dunya. Whenever he walks, he used to walk fast, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He would never drag his feet. And when the Prophet sallallahu walked, some of the companions said like Jabir and other, we almost run to catch up with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As if he's going down from hell, very going fast, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He used to dislike that anybody will walk behind him like kings. He loved or he always ordered and recommend and command his companions to walk on the right and the left side, not behind him like the kings. Also the Prophet wasallam, as I said, he will not drag his feet while he is walking wasallam, and instead min al -ard. The Prophet wasallam, when he walk, he will bring his feet up to make a full step sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he sat, he was simple in the way he sat with people. Sometimes he will have a pillow or something to lean on it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he's sitting. But he will never do that when he's eating sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will always be sitting properly while he's eating sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will not sit in a way which will show his private parts. The Prophet ﷺ will sit always in a proper way. The Prophet ﷺ, whenever somebody call him, whenever somebody call him, the Prophet ﷺ will always move his whole entire body to move toward that person who was calling him. He will not just move his face or his neck. He will face the person with his chest, that person who was calling him or talking to him out of respect. Whenever he talks, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will use his hand while he's talking. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa always, as Ibn Kathir said, will open his palm like this and would, as if he's welcoming people. So he talks like this. By the way, in modern times or today when you go to university and they teach you the technique of public speaking or teaching, they will tell you, Whenever you talk to people, whenever you talk to people, and you start saying like this, and every time you talk, you do like this, you will lose a large number of your audience. And it's even worse if you talk and you start pointing using your finger, this and this and that, you will lose a lot of people. They said the best way to address any crowd that you always welcome and open arms when you talk to them. That's what they teach you when you take a course in, uh, as a professional speaker, or a, it would just you became your profession to be public speaker. Subhanallah. That's how the Prophet Sallallahu used to be. He taught by the best teacher, the, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anyway, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sometimes also when he hears something he will surprise him 
or will he be amazed with? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will flip his hands like this. Subhanallah. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also use sometimes when he talks that he will do like this. He will hold his thumb, his left thumb with his hand Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he talks. When he talks, he will go against his left thumb with his palm, with his right palm Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like this. And he will holding it sometimes when he talks Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he talks, his talking is so clear, slow. And sometimes he will repeat his statement more than one time. So people will understand and will be able to memorize what he's saying. He has the ability in a few words to express so many meanings. His words are so general that in itself it's a miracle that the Prophet ﷺ was given. Whenever he talks, he will not talk too much. And he used to remain silent most of his time. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Kana tawila sukut. Always start his talk and end his talk with mentioning Allah's names. All the time. In the beginning and in the end and in between. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He never, he never, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made poetry. He's not a poet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes he will quote half a line or part from a line which is said by a poet, but he never made it, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, even though his Arabic language was perfect. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, also, he used to smile a lot. So many of the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, like Jabir ibn Samurah, said, I met the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa over a hundred times in my life. Over a hundred times in my life. Every time I meet him, I find him smiling. By the way, last night I praise Indian, Indian a lot. And I'm, I still believe in what I said last night. But let me today mention something I noticed it, which is I want it to be changed. That I noticed it since I came in India. Even I noticed in all levels, in airport, in market, even here in the conference sometimes which is something we need to work on it. And I want you to promise me, all of you, that you will work on it more after this lectures. Would you promise me? Inshallah? Okay, you have to know, to give me $10 each one of you? No. You know what you need to work on? Smiling. I notice that people, they don't smile much here. And I don't know why. I think this is part of our deen, part of our religion. Let's make sure that in this conference, we always smile at each other. We always greet each other with the smile before Assalamu Alaikum. Before any word comes out of your mouth, let this smile shine in your face. It's a very beautiful habit that you always smile. So I want to see that more. No, no matter, no, regardless what is your age, what is your gender, smiling is something beautiful and it is part of our etiquette. And that's the way the Prophet ﷺ, all, so many companions said, every time I meet the Prophet ﷺ, he's smiling. The first thing, the first impression, whenever you see him, he's smiling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Has a smiley face, happy face, all the time, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet ﷺ's wife, Aisha radiallahu anha, when Amra, her student and her servant, asked her, how was the Prophet ﷺ at home? Because some people good and smiling outside, but not inside. They smile and joke outside houses, but in the house, they are totally different personality. So Aisha said, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, لَقَدْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ She said, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم كَانَ أَكْرَمَ النَّاسِ Very generous. Yani, he was generous outside and very generous with us as well. وَكَانَ ضَحَّاكًا بَسَّامًا he used to smile a lot. He used to laugh a lot. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam.
It is the most comprehensive book that explains how we live our life according to Islam. A collection of authentic prophetic statements and actions. Let us study the book Riyadh Salihin, Gardens of the Righteous. I pray for our I pray for every child. Gear up to comprehend several reliable ahadith to effectively understand the vision of Islam on various aspects of life in Riyadhus Salihin, Gardens of the Righteous. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Courage it takes to stand up for what you believe in. Courage it takes to be true and righteous. Courage it takes to dare and answer. Your questions, be they social, political, economic, educational or religious. To get clear and convincing answers. Test your courage and question me in the to ask. Dare to Ask, next on Peace TV. The Prophet وسلم, also, he used to smile a lot. So many of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, said, like Jabir ibn Samurah, said, I met the Prophet وسلم, over a hundred times in my life. Over a hundred times in my life. Every time I meet him, I find him smiling. By the way, last night I praise Indian, Indian a lot, and I'm, I still believe in what I said last night. But let me today mention something I noticed it, which is I want it to be changed. That I noticed it since I came in India. Even I noticed in all levels, in airport, in market, even here in the conference sometimes, which is something we need to work on it. And I want you to promise me, all of you, that you will work on it more after this lectures. Would you promise me? Inshallah? Okay. You have to know to give me $10 each one of you. Now, you know what you need to work on? Smiling. I noticed that people, they don't smile much here. And I don't know why. I think this is part of our deen, part of our religion. Let's make sure that in this conference, we always smile at each other. We always greet each other with the smile before Assalamu Alaikum. Before any word comes out of your mouth, let this smile shine in your face. It's a very beautiful habit that you always smile. So I want to see that more. No, no matter, no, regardless what is your age, what is your gender, smiling is something beautiful and it is part of our etiquette. And that's the way the Prophet Sallallahu All, so many companions said, Every time I meet the Prophet ﷺ, he's smiling. The first thing, the first impression, whenever you see him, he's smiling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Has a smiley face, happy face all the time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet ﷺ's wife, Aisha radiallahu anha, when Amra, her student and her servant, asked her, how was the Prophet ﷺ at home? Because some people good and smiling outside, but not inside. They smile and joke outside houses, but in the house, they are totally different personality. So Aisha said, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, laqad kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, she said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana akram al nas, very generous. Yani, he was generous outside and very generous with us as well. Wa kana dhahakam bassama. He used to smile a lot. He used to laugh a lot. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Wasallam always would love to bring happiness to others and make others smile and laugh. The Prophet وسلم, part of his life, part of his, part of his daily activity that he used even to joke with his companions. We'll joke with 
An old woman approached him as in Sunan Abi Dawood, even though the hadith, some scholars have criticized the isnad of it, said it's not that sound, but it's a very common, and the scholars have been mentioning it generations after generations. As I said in Sunan Abi Dawood, that the Prophet ﷺ once joked with a woman, an old woman, came to him, and the Prophet ﷺ told her that in Jannah, no old woman will enter Jannah. Then she got sad. He said, why are you sad? And he told, asked his companion to tell her that the Prophet ﷺ meant, and yani no one will enter Jannah while he or she is old. Everybody will enter Jannah while they are in young age, in their 30s, not old. So she misunderstood the Prophet ﷺ. He joked so many times, once with Azhar, one of his companions. He had a very dark skin, ugly look. And people sometimes will think that he's just a slave in Medina. And he was not, he was a free man. Once he was selling something in the souk. And you know, in the souk, people used to sell goods and sometimes they will sell slaves. So Nabi Sallallahu came from behind of Azhar and he held him like that. And he said, who will buy this slave? And he meant that he's a slave of Allah. Then the man, Azhar, in the beginning, before he heard the Prophet ﷺ voice, he started fighting. He was afraid that somebody really will steal him, and take him as a slave. So he started fighting. So the Prophet ﷺ said that, he recognized the Prophet ﷺ's voice. Then he said, then immediately I start pushing myself back towards the Prophet ﷺ's stomach and chest so my skin will touch his skin. And I will let him hug me more. Then he said, Ya Rasulullah, nobody will buy a skinny man like me who can't do much. I'm not going to make any money for you. Then he said, But you in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes, so valuable, so valuable. The Prophet ﷺ used to joke with his companion. And this is something so many people, they don't think of the Prophet ﷺ as a person always laugh and joke with his companion. People think that he, because people have this perspective, Shaykh, a scholar, a student of knowledge, somebody grow his beard, a sister put a hijab or put a niqab, it means, that's it, look, khanas, it's, that's it, as if yeah, and he, uh, uh, he's gonna fight with you. No, that's not the way. Some people think that being religious, it means no more fun. Absolutely wrong. The real fun comes when you're religious. Really the happiness and the smile and the joke and the pure jokes comes when you became a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also used to sleep like any other humans. And the Prophet sallallahu will most of the time sleep third of the night and sometimes half of the night and sometimes just a little bit over the third. Ibn al-Qayyim said that and some scholars said average of eight hours a day. And he used to take a short nap before Dhuhr, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam go to sleep, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will make the adhkar, the dua that he always used to do, wiping his face and his body, and he will sleep in his right side, putting his hand under his cheek on the right side, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he will stand up, and make wudu, pray the night prayer, then goes back to sleep a short time before Fajr. And sometimes he will go back to have an intercourse with his wife right before Fajr. Then he will take ghusl and will go to prayer, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Whenever he goes back to sleep after Qiyam al-Layl, they said he used to sleep while he's putting his cheek on his palm and his hand stands like this on the floor. See, he will not go all the way laying completely on the floor, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slept on a bed. He had a bed at home. He slept on a bed. He slept on the floor. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slept also in, on a garment on the floor, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a special pillow. And he had also, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sheet to cover himself with when he sleeps, sallallahu alayhi wa wa sallam. Whenever he woke up for Fajr or for Salat, after sleeping, the Prophet ﷺ used to wipe his face with his hand. As in Sunan Abi Dawood, he will 
He will wipe his face with his hand, وسلم, taking the sleep away from him. The Prophet وسلم, also used to cry whenever there is something required that. The Prophet وسلم, cried when he saw his uncle killed in the day of Ahud and torture. He cried when his son Ibrahim died before that in Mecca. He cried when his two daughters died and he buried them. He cried when he saw the body of Uthman ibn Mav'oon in front of him after he was killed. He cried sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he was able to save a young boy in the last minutes of his life by asking him to be a Muslim and to accept La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And the boy accepted that. And he accepted that and he converted to Islam. The Prophet ﷺ left that boy's house while his tears coming down and saying, Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah, that Allah saved him from hellfire by me. The Prophet ﷺ cried once when he was praying in the night in Qiyam al layl in the, in the prayer of Al-Kusuf, when the clips happened, he saw the hellfire in front of him. Then in Nabi Sallam cried. And Nabi Sallam cried also when he's praying in the night, when he read certain verses, or when certain verses were recited for him. As Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an told us that once the Prophet Sallam asked him to read for him, then when Ibn Mas'ud recited the Quran in Surah An-Nisa and he reached the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا when we'll bring a witness from each and every nation, and you, Ya Muhammad, will be the witness over your own nation, the Prophet's tears start falling. Ibn Mas'ud said, I put my head up and I saw him crying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because that moment the Prophet realized in the day of judgment, he will be there standing while Allah judging his ummah in the day of judgment, which shows you another characteristic of the Prophet. Another thing that you need to know about your prophet, that he loved you the most. You, not anybody else. He loved his followers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loved those who believed in him. Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha once, and the hadith reported by several of scholars, such as Ibn Hibban and others, that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked once by Aisha. She said, Ya Rasulullah, pray for me. Then the Nabi Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, forgive her all her sin. Whatever she committed in the past, whatever she will do in the future, whatever she did in, the, in secret, whatever she did in public. Allahumma ghafir laha dhambaha kulla. Ma qaddamat wa ma akharat. Ma a'lanat wa ma asrara. She smiled. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Are you happy, Ya Aisha? Are you surprised that I pray for you such prayer? She said, why not, Ya Rasulullah? You just ask Allah to forgive all my sin, the, in the past, in the future, whatever in public, whatever in secret. Then him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told her, Wallahi ya Aisha. Wallahi ya Aisha. By Allah ya Aisha. This is the same dua, the same prayer, the same supplication that I do every day for my nation. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's what he's asking Allah for you and me and her and him in the day of judgment where every prophet, every messenger running away and caring about himself and every human actually saying nafsi nafsi my soul my soul myself 
saw only to, to save his own soul. Except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying something different. He will be saying, Ummati, 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 my nation, my nation, my nation, O oh Allah. If you would like to know your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you must know that he loved you, so he loves you so much. He prayed for you. He didn't hesitate to do everything possible in his hand to deliver this message complete to you. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ used to have a ring and only he took the ring in the end of his life when he was told that kings and other leaders of other tribes will not accept his letters without being sealed. So Nabi ﷺ took a ring made of fiddha, silver, and engraving on it, he engra it was engraved on it, Muhammad Rasulullah, written in a very unique way. Allah on the top, then Rasul in the middle, and Muhammad in the bottom. You read it from the bottom to the top, Muhammad Rasulullah, to put Allah's name on the top, not Muhammad Sallallahu name on the top. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortunate one, paradise must be won. Paradise must be won each day. Yeah.